The dealership told me it was one of 156 titles that the DMV lost. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Warwick and you're watching Gas Tax Garage. The channel that's here to help you build your dream garage. And today in my dream garage, we're talking about everything wrong with my 2008 Z06. So let's jump right into it. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. If you're a long time subscriber, always good to have you back. Just a reminder, we have a giveaway ending at the end of this month where you can win up to $4,000 of Sonic tools. So be sure you check out this video now and follow what it says. Now that that's out of the way, let's jump into a little sit down chat about everything wrong with my 2008 Corvette and why I have a title problem. Well, here we are in my newly designed garage and I am sure this is not the most flattering position I can be in, but if you wanted flattering positions online, I'm sure there's other websites you can check out. But today we're gonna to be talking about my 2008 Z06. Now, I bought this car about three months ago, but I've had a bunch of issues with it. Uh, some self-inflicted and others, let's just say, Hmm, it was a dealership problem. Bitch. All right, so firstly, if you haven't seen the video when I purchased this car about three months ago, I'll leave a link right here, I believe. So be sure you check that out. Anyways, this is my 2008 C6Z06. And I absolutely love this car. If you've been around for a while, you know I had a 2018 R8 RWS, which was a rear wheel drive Audi R8. Great car. Uh, it was an automatic, um, fun life experience, but it wasn't technically a great car for me. COVID happened, a whole bunch of things happened, I decided to sell that car. Fast forward a year and a half later, my buddy Xtelgic decided he wanted one of these cars and he told me all about them. He told me a bit too much, so I ended up copying him and getting the same exact car. So if your friend tells you a bit too much about cars, do yourself a favor, copy the car because he did a lot of research and it saves you some time. So let's first talk about the things I chose to do before we talk about the title issue, which I'll address last. But firstly, after I purchased the car, I did a PPI. My PPI stands for post-purchase inspection because I'm impulsive and I didn't feel like waiting for a pre-purchase inspection. So what I did is I bought the car and then I dropped it off at my buddies here local to me called MPC. They don't normally work on American muscle. They're normally a foreign car dealer. That's how I met them was through my Audi R8. But since I do all the random odds and sods with them, they agreed to check this stuff out. The one thing they didn't want to do or they didn't know knowledge about doing was fixing the valve drop heads issue. So I went to a different place for that. But let's go into what they found. So firstly, I also told them I'm gonna take this car on a track day. So I needed them to make sure it was track ready. So they did a pre-track inspection as well as a PPI and they found that the rack and pinion was no bueno. They decided to change that and look, who am I? They're the mechanics. I agree with them and I trust them. Obviously from there I need a four wheel alignment. From there as well I went with the performance brake fluid flush because obviously I'm tracking the car. They did find some engine oil leaking on the bottom there, but I wasn't too worried about that because the next shop was going to do some engine work. On top of that, they recommended I do a clutch fluid change because they did find some water in there. But apparently changing the fluid on this clutch is not the easiest thing, so they installed a remote bleeder as well and made the job easier and will make it easier for the future. After that, they told me basically everything is fine. The major thing was the rack and pinion. They did tell me the brakes and rotors would probably be fine for one track day. So I decided, let me get one track day out of those. Now that I did the PPI, I needed to get an appointment with someone else to get the heads work done. And that's when 
Speed Ink comes in. Speed Ink's also local to me around the Chicagoland area. I'm not gonna go into all the details of what they did to fix this issue because it's still over my head, but you know, for $2,500, it seems cheaper than buying a $20,000 engine if it blows up. Funny enough though, I did risk it because I did do a track day before I fixed the engine. So, I don't know, I was a stupid knot. The engine didn't explode, so that worked. Anyways, I'm gonna refer you to my buddy Exteldrick's channel. He goes in depth about what they do because he got this work done the same time I did. While I had it at this specific Corvette or American Muscle shop, I asked them to change the brake pads, so they did that. Now, those are all the mechanical issues. Um, on top of that, the paint is pretty horrible. I will show you some clips of zooming up and around this thing. There are scratches all over, which gives me a perfect opportunity to get my buffing wheel out and test if I'm good at that or not. And if not, I guess uh, someone else is gonna have to fix that problem. Now I'm planning on making this a fun, affordable track car, so I have bought a couple more things. I did purchase some performance rotors and new pads that are replaced at the same time. You know, things just didn't line up at the same time. I did purchase uh, front and rear tow hooks. I don't plan on crashing, but there's a possibility it will happen. On top of that, unrelated to the car, but related, I did purchase a race car trailer so I can do a lot more track events. So if you wanna see that video, it's right here, or just stick around and you'll see more track days and the trailer. Now, that's really everything that's wrong with the car. Overall, I love it. It's uh, the right amount of horsepower. I think the ZR1 would be epic, <laughs> but I don't need that much power yet. Maybe I will, but not yet. Now, let's talk about the title issue. Now, I live in Illinois, and I found this car through my buddy Extelgic. He referred me to a dealership in Wisconsin. Their name is whatever it is. You can look on my Instagram for that. I purchased the car, and when I purchased the car, I decided I would take a loan out on half of the car. So I went up to the dealership, paid cash for half of the car, took a loan out for the rest of the car. They just got the car in as a dealer trade from Michigan. So the car was from Michigan, I bought it in Wisconsin, I'm from Illinois. Now, with that, that means this at least two DMVs apparently that need to see the title. Um, and since I'm out of town or out of state, I have to actually pay the tax in my state when I get to the state and try to register the car. But since I took a loan out on the car, the title first has to go to the bank and then it has to come to me, which adds some delay time. Now, during this process, I decided I don't want a loan on the car. I'm just gonna pay off the car. So when my first payment came, I still hadn't received the title, but I decided I'll just pay off the car at that point. So I decided to pay the car off. Now I know it was in the middle of the process of being a loan created, a new car, and then I messed it all up by paying the loan. I thought that's what the issue was of why the title was taking so long to get to me. At this point, my first temp plate expired and Wisconsin only gives you 30 day temp plates, which is an issue. So what I do is I call the dealership and I say, hey guys, look, I still don't have the temp plate. I think, you know, I screwed things up because I paid off the, the, the loan too early, um, but I need another temp plate. Three, four days later, still no temp plate. I had to call them back and say, guys, look, I really need a temp plate. My temp plate expired. I don't want a $40,000 paperweight sitting in my driveway. I need a template. Luckily that worked and they sent me a new template. So fast forward another 30 days and my second template has expired. At this point, I was like, look, this is taking too long. So I actually called the bank I had the loan with and I said, hey guys, look, I paid off the loan more than a month ago. And by the way, I still don't have a title. And at that point, the bank told me, hey, look, we never received the title either. We actually called the dealer multiple times to tell them, don't send us the title, send it directly to Warwick because he satisfied the loan. Now, if you can imagine, that was somewhat sketchy, if you will, because the CNC Motors thing was happening or is happening during this time. If you haven't seen that story, go check out Normal Guy Supercar, uh, link up here about that whole story. 
it's a long story. So now I'm getting some, some vibes that something's not working right. So I call the actual dealership again. I was like, hey guys, this is a scenario. You haven't sent me a title. The bank doesn't have the title. I paid off the loan. What's happening? At this point, they said, look, we'll call you back in an hour. We will have an answer for you. Five hours goes by, nothing. I have to call them back. And obviously they say, well, look, the DMV lost the title. Apparently in Wisconsin, the dealership has to send the title to the Wisconsin DMV if there's a loan issued on the car. And apparently the DMV lost the title. The dealership told me it was one of 156 titles that the DMV lost. I said, well, I don't really care who lost my title. I still don't want a $40,000 paperweight in my driveway. I need a new template. At this point, the dealership told me, you can't get another template. You've already had two, so we feel very sorry for you. At this point, I start losing it, if you can imagine. I have a $40,000 paperweight. No one has my title, apparently, and I can't get a template until this is all sorted out, even though the dealership told me the DMV lost the title. So if the DMV acknowledged they lost the title, they should clearly just issue me another template, and they refuse to. Well. That's what the dealership told me. So while I'm talking to the dealership, I said, hey, look, just give me your DMV contact. Let me talk to them. I asked them this about three times, four times, and nothing. Radio silence. I said, let me talk to a manager. I need to talk to somebody other than the dude that I'm dealing with. I was dealing with two different guys. Neither of them could give me any information other than they feel very sorry for my situation. So anyways, the next day I get on the phone with Wisconsin DMV, go through all the the trees of protocol you have to get to until you get to the actual DMV that handles dealerships. And they told me, we've never received the title. We've never lost the title. And by the way, if we lost 156 titles, I wouldn't have my job. That's what the agent told me on the phone. So they had no record of getting <laughs> the title sent to them or, or any of that. They did have a record of saying, look out for a title, there's a new person that has bought this car, but they didn't have anything else on that. So now that I found this information out, I call the dealership again and I tell them, you guys are lying to me what happened to the title. At this point, the dealership tells me, oh, well, the DMV did lose it, they just don't think they lost it and we didn't lose it, but we're gonna call the previous owner of the car and ask him to get a new title issued. Now to me this is sketchy because now I've had the car two and a half months at this point and now the person that sold them the car has to claim it's their car in order to get a new title. Now at this point it's all pretty sketchy and I'm not happy about the story. So I tell them, look guys, you got 15 days to get me a title or there's gonna be issues. I'm gonna get a legal team involved and they assured me this is not their fault, it's the DMV fault, and they told me that this new guy, uh, the previous owner will end up getting the title, which it's all hearsay at this point. Who knows if that guy actually has time to go to the DMV and get the title. So during this time, I decided, screw it, I'm actually just going to contact my lawyer and send them a legal letter saying, look, you either owe me a refund on the car plus all the money I put into it at this point, or, you just get me this title and that's the bottom line. I just want the title. I don't want a car I can't own and modify the car. I bought this car to have fun, make videos, and now I look like an idiot if the car just disappears. So the dealership tried to call me a couple times. I refused to talk to them at this point because they have my lawyer's contact information and I said all further communication needs to go through him. So funny enough, I called the DMV maybe a week later and they say, yes, we received your title, we sent it to the bank. I personally believe the dealership lost the title. No one wanted to own up to that. They blamed it on the DMV and then just left and, and tried to make this lie continue and continue and continue. But either way, the title has arrived to me after it got sent to the bank. Then I gotta call the bank again. Now I'm not a customer for the last three months with this bank. <laughs> so lucky enough, they did send me the title. Now I received the title on the Monday. It's fantastic, Monday afternoon I checked my mail. So now I'm gonna go register it on a Tuesday so I can have place because now my temp plates have expired. Tuesday morning I get an email from my insurance company saying their DMV records and the records I provided them about purchasing the car are not valid and I have three days to prove that I own this car, show them a registration and a title or else my insurance is null and void and this car is uninsurable. 
So luckily I had the title the day before. I went and I registered the title, but now I'm in a hold position with my insurance company because that also takes two to three weeks or I don't know, two months to go through the Illinois DMV process. I do have the registration, thank goodness. They have accepted that for now, but I still don't know what actually happened with this title because the dealership completely lied and I'm pretty sure the previous owner didn't get a new title in a couple days from Michigan State. But anyways, guys, as it stands, I have an Illinois plate. I have a registration in the glove box. I still don't have a title. Hopefully that comes in a bit and hopefully this is not a stolen car. But if it is, I guess I'll make a video on that. But guys, I have a couple modifications I'm going to be doing on this car in the next couple of videos. I have a massive 71 inch wing for the back. I have a front splitter for the front. And then I'm going to do a couple more track days next month. So thanks a lot for sticking around for that long story. Hopefully it's all sorted out by now. But guys, be sure you like this video, hit the subscribe button and leave a comment below so you are entered in to win some Sonic tools. But until next time guys, I'll see you then.